Hello everyone, I'm Someone from the Dark, and today I'm going to be going over a tutorial on how to use the Kingdom Hearts DDD BC SAR tool that I developed. So what this tool does is it extracts files from the Somnium.bcsar that you get when you extract from the 3DS ROM, and it allows you to get to the sound files, which in this case are BC WAV files. And you can then replace those BC Wave files with custom sounds, custom battle quotes, and then pack those files back into a Somnium.bcsar that can be used to build your custom ROMs. So without further ado, here we go. Deep freeze! Alright guys, so what you just heard was the Blizzard sound effect from Kingdom Hearts 1. I have it saved as a WAV file, and what we're going to use is MF Audio. It's a program. I have a download link to it in the description. We're going to use this to prep the wave file for insertion into the game. So the first thing that I just did is I changed the frequency to 24,000 hertz. And now I'm changing the number of channels to 1. You'll see it switches from stereo to mono on this tool. And uh, that's because that's the format that the sound needs to be in to play in Dream Drop Distance. So now I'm going to be saving the file as KH1 deep freeze underscore 24,000 because 24,000 hertz. And uh, you can see I've already made this file before, but we're just going to we're going to remove it and replace it. And, be good to go so we can do our proof of concept at the end of the video. So now that we have the modified WAV file, we're going to use a program called the Top Plus, also a download link down in the description. This is going to convert it into a BC wave. Besides the Top Plus, you also need this CTR wave converter I was just pointing out with my mouse, but uh, unfortunately I can't give you a download link for that. You're going to have to find it on your own. But it's, it's nice and easy to use this tool. Once you've got that, you drag the wave onto the tool. It asks you where you want to. You click wave to see wave conversion. And it asks you where you want to save the file. I'm going to save it in this folder over here called BC Wave. <clears throat> and uh, you can see again, I've already made the file once before. We're just going to create a new one and. It'll do this little thing with the black box until it's done, and we've got our new file set. Alright, now we're going to learn how to use my tool. I have my BC SAR over here on the left that I've extracted from the 3DS ROM. I'm going to drag it onto the tool. That makes it the first parameter. Whenever it gets a parameter, if it's a normal file, it extracts from it, and if it finds any files in there that can be extracted, it extracts from those as well. And it creates a folder for extracted files to put them in, and subfolders for any other files inside there that it finds so on and so forth. Um, in this case, the BCSAR is going through and finding all the files, extracting them. I've sped up this extraction by about 300%, so I don't have to wait as long. But um, as it's going through, there's kind of a few different types of files. If it finds a file or info block, it saves those as a .file and .info, um, just to make things easier for the tool. And then those .file sections, usually, those .file blocks usually contain other files, of which there are BC sequence, BC WSD, BC group, BC War, which is the most important one, and uh, BC BNK, I think, is the last one. Uh, BC War contains a bunch of BC waves in its dot file block, in its file block. Um, so all these folders are BC waves that have been, or BC Wars that have been extracted, and they contain these waves. Here's where we have Sora's. So you can see there's the dot file, and here are all of Sora's quotes stored in the BC wave format. Now we can. Um, we want to go back because when you extract from the BC SAR, you don't generate um, this padding table that I need. So we're going to extract from the file again. It's going to create a text file. Once we get that, we're good to go. We don't have to extract again because we already extracted everything, so I'm going to kill the program. And here are all the offsets that we need. And um, we also want to do that for anyone whose sound we're replacing. So we're going to go back to Sora's folder, which is 033019. 0976. So we're going to extract this dot file file as well to make the padding table. In the future, hopefully this can be automatic, but for now in version 1.0.0, you're going to have to do this yourself for every character that you're modifying the sounds of. Also notice that inside the dot file, or inside the the name of the padding file, is the name of the folder and the, the original dot file file. If you change the name of the folder when you're rebuilding, you need to change the, the 000608 to match that because that's what it's using to uh, to look up the name of the dot padding file. 
So anyways, I'm now going to import these sounds into FooBar 2000, because it can play VC Waves, uh, if you have the correct DLL. Download link for the DLL and the, and the program in the description. <laughs> No way! Ha! Yeah! Yeah! Okay! Cha! Ha! 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 There! It's over! So long! Take this! Yeah! Come on! Back off! Hail! Fire! Freeze! Alright, so we just found the freeze quote at 00002256752.bc wave. So I've now found in a folder. This is the file we need to replace. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, rename this file. Anything that has an underscore in front of it, when my tool goes through and is rebuilding, it ignores any files with an underscore in front of them. So I'm going to do that. So we ignore this file and I don't have to delete it. Um, but I also copied that number because that's useful for renaming the BC waves that we created um, that we're going to that we created with the top plus, right? In this case, I've already put the number there, but it'd be useful to copy and put it in because then it properly sorts it. Even if I have that underscore cage one underscore blizzard on the end to tell me what file it is, having the number there sorts it into place so that when I'm rebuilding, it gets inserted in the proper spot to actually replace the blizzard sound effect, not to shift everything down by one. So anyways, it's all good. We have everything there, but the problem is... Uh, so actually, I'm going to double check real quick. There are 44 files that don't have an underscore in front of them. So that's the proper number that we need. But there is a problem. The problem is that this blizzard file, deep freeze, only seven kilobytes. The original up here, nine kilobytes. They need to be the same size. So I'm going to open this up in HXD. Again, download link for HXD in the description. And you can see if I do Control A, it selects all. And then it says the length down here is 2040. That's in hex. But that's okay because my program will accept it in hex. So we're now going to drag the BC wave onto the tool. Oh, oops, the tool's not there. Uh, there's the tool. We're going to drag the BC wave onto the tool. It's going to tell us the current file length is 1898 or whatever. I'm going to type in 2040. It's going to pad it with zeros to get there. I'm going to drag the original file back into my archive for later. And we have the new file there that's padded. It's now 9 kilobytes. We're good to go. We've got our 44 files. The new sound effects are in there. And we got our padding file. So now we're going to drag the folder containing all those files on. It tells the new link is 61208 in hex. We're going to open up the old, the original .file file. You can select all, 61208. It matches. If it doesn't match you know, after that first padding that we did, we've probably done something wrong, maybe with our padding file or something. But yeah, when we type in zero there for it, the wanted length, it's not going to pad anything. And now I'm going to append underscores to the front of the file name so these old ones get, get ignored. Notice here it generated two files, a new dot file and a corresponding dot info. So those two file links, they now match the original file links and we're good to go. Uh, back out one more directory. We've got our Sora folder. We're going to drag that into the tool. It tells us the new length is 0x61468. If we open up the original Sora file, we can then open it up in HXD, Control A, the length is 61468 down there at the bottom. Perfect, it matches. We're going to type in 0 to the tool again because we don't want to pad it. Like I said before, if you have to pad it, something's going on. Also, also put the underscore in front of the file name. So type in zero, it doesn't pad it, it puts the new file down there. I'm going to rename the file to uh, KH1, so I kind of have a description of what this file is. Alright, remember, if you put anything like underscore afterwards, the number, it still sorts properly, so you can have a little descriptor in the names. Alright, we got our padding file, we got the folder, we drag the folder on. It tells us the new file length is going to be 13DFB628 which matches our original file length in HXD, so we're good to go. We're going to close HXD, drag the folder, oh, we'll type in zero to get the pad file length, um, rename with the underscore to turn the old file invisible, and rename the new file so that it's descriptive with a cage one right there. All right, now we're ready to rebuild the original file. We'll drag the Somnium folder over, and it's going to tell us the length, 1404E468. Hey, that's awesome, because if we do this in HXD, that's the original file length. So now we can type in 0 for our padding. It won't pad the file. It generates the new file. 
I'm gonna name a file real quick to kh1 and we're good to go. So now I've switched over to the the hacking toolkit 3ds which is used to extract decrypted ROMs and then rebuild decrypted ROMs. If we go into the folder, we go to the sound folder, English, output, there's the original Somnium folder. I'm going to paste in our new one, delete the old one because I've got backups everywhere, and uh, we got to rename this one to Somnium so that the toolkit can find it. And now we'll go back out, run the toolkit, I'm going to speed this up a little bit so it's a little bit faster, but basically if we type in a D here, that'll extract from a decrypted ROM. If we type in an R instead, that'll rebuild the decrypted ROM. Now we're going to type in the file name. I'm going to use DDD underscore deep freeze. And after this, I'm going to start speeding it up. All right, and it just finished. So now we're going to close that tool. We're going to move the ROM into my ROMs folder. This uh, K, this DDD underscore deep freeze edited dot 3ds. Um, and now we have Citra here. Citra is a 3ds emulator. Download link down in the description. Run it with Citra Qt. Load up the file DDD deep freeze edited dot yes. And now we get to test it out and see if, if we've gotten the deep freeze sound effect into the game. I'm going to speed this up a little bit so that the in-game audio isn't as choppy because it can't run at full speed on my laptop. Alright, and it worked. Thanks guys, I hope that you guys enjoyed the tutorial and this will help you make your custom ROMs in the future. If you like the video, gives it a, gives it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're not already for future work in this uh, tool and other hacking Kingdom Hearts stuff. Thanks for watching.